When I hear this gospel passage, it takes me back to my college seminary days. I know there's a couple of uh, religious in here today. I don't know if you did this in your community or not, but one of the things we would do periodically throughout the year was what was called chapter of falls. Chapter of falls. And what would take place is, it was a scheduled time on the calendar, and you knew it was going to take place. But anyways, it would start at a certain time and end at a certain time. The bell would ring. Everyone would be in their seminary room. And there was a rotation. Each seminarian would go into the other seminarian's room and sit facing them in a chair and tell them their faults. <laughs> and would tell them their faults. And basically, it was not a time to really discuss it. It was not really a time to say, oh, that's not true. It was a time to listen. But here is what is at the heart of it. It was about community. It was about forming community. It was about helping community to be better. And ultimately, what we were all called to have at the basis of it was love. It was not a time to make a dig at somebody. It was not a time to criticize somebody. It was not a time to put somebody down. It was fraternal correction in love. I think of that when I hear the gospel passage and the other two readings today. Wow. You know, whenever we see a child putting their hand toward the stove, we stop them. Or if we know that our friend, and we go out partying, and has had too much to drink, we're going to say, let me drive the car. Or if we see somebody that's headed down, you know, a path, oh, wait a minute, that's the wrong path, it's a dead end. We are willing to look out for people when it comes to those sort of things because we don't want them to get injured. But when we see one of our brothers and sisters moving towards sin, we take a hands-off approach. I ain't getting involved in that. I ain't going to say anything to my sister. I ain't going to say anything to my brother. They're going to be real upset with me if I call them to some truth, if I call them to what the gospel calls us to, if I call them to what the Ten Commandments say. I, oh, no, I, I'm not going to, oh, no, I, I can't say anything to them. We will sit back and watch our brothers and sisters walk right into sin, and we know it's wrong, and we will not say anything. We would rather see them sin than in fraternal charity to say something. That says a lot about us as community. It says a lot about us as family. But you see, in the first reading today, the prophet Ezekiel, you son of man, I, God says, I appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. If I tell the wicked, a wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die of his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. Ouch. Ouch. In other words, you're not just responsible for yourself in community, brothers and sisters. You're responsible for your brothers and sisters. But if, if you warn them and try to turn him from his way, if he refuses, well, he dies of his guilt. But you shall save yourself. When we hear this gospel passage today, and I think of this passage in light of the early Christian community, how those small house churches work together in love, small groups of 30 to 50 people, you can see how important this is for the people to build up community and to move the community forward in love, in love. But it's interesting to note that as this is being said, nowhere in it does it say about punishing them. Nowhere in there does it say anything about excommunicating them. It says the process to go through if someone is moving in sin or has sinned against you.
but ultimately it is about love. Ultimately, it is about the good of the community, helping one another to grow, to grow, brothers and sisters. And Paul says it very well. It's about love. It's, you've got the other commandments, but ultimately it is about love. We need to think about that. We need to think about that in how we work in our own families and in our parish communities. All too often in our parish communities, we do just the reverse, or we don't do it at all. What we like to do is, if we think someone has sinned against us or has offended us, the first thing we do is we go tell 50 people in the parish so that they can get against the person who they're talking about. We tear them apart, we cut them up, we chew them to shreds, and we spit them out. And then while they're laying there bleeding, oh, in Christian charity, I'm just trying to help you. That's not Christian charity. That's doing the same thing a lot of times you accuse the other people of doing. Here's a great little story. A mother whose son had an insatiable desire for sweets brought him a long distance to talk to Gandhi, who told them to come back in two weeks. So they came back. And when he came back, Gandhi told the boy to stop eating so much sugar. And the boy agreed. The mother asked Gandhi, Bapu, why did you not just say this to him two weeks ago and save me the hardship of traveling back here? Gandhi replied, two weeks ago, I ate too many sweets. I needed to see if I could stop before I counseled the boy. I think that's one of the things we need to include in when we want to fraternally correct someone. Many times the thing we want to fraternally correct someone on is the very thing we need to correct in ourselves. We don't want to admit it, but many times the thing that we want to correct others on is what we need to correct ourselves on. One of the things that I think we are facing in this country right now is there's so much hatred and anger and bitterness and resentment. We as people of faith, we as people who follow Jesus Christ, need to be people of love. And that love and that fraternal charity and that fraternal correction is about building the community. It's not about tearing down. It's not about tearing apart. It's not about this side or that side. It's about taking the time to understand. To understand the other person. When you go to the other person, don't go with, I'm gonna get them. I'm going to tear them up. Uh, go with the position that where two or three are gathered, I am there. That Christ is in the midst and the center of what is going on. If that Christ is at the center of what's going on, then we should approach it in love. Not with, this is my agenda, this is what I'm going to get, and I'm going to get all over you. It should be about helping the other person. Lifting up the other person, not tearing the other person down. That's why we can't have any conversations in this country today. As soon as someone says something, it is a tear down. My position is right. You are wrong. Hello? What is the truth? And where is the Lord calling us? And what is the Lord asking us? We move to anger. We move to violence. We move to destruction. And nobody can hear the message. Nobody can hear the message. that ultimately, if we listen to Paul, everything is about love. 
If it is about love, then it doesn't matter how we look. It doesn't matter what color we are. It does not matter what language we speak. What matters is that we have all been made in the image and likeness of God. Therefore, we are all neighbors. We are all brothers and sisters. And therefore, everyone needs to move from that position, a position of love, seeking what is good for one another, seeking for what is good in the community. For where two or three are gathered, Jesus says, I am there. And I think we need to listen very clearly to the responsorial psalm today. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Harden not your hearts. If you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you must be about love. You must be about opening your hearts to change and to conversion, to seeing things different, to living our lives differently, always seeking what is good for one another, always in love.